I'm Keena Nisley. I'm a real estate agent with Keller Williams, and this is The Life of the Land is in Its Real Estate with Think Tech Hawaii. Today, we are going to talk about where is the real estate market? With, we're close to six months of a shutdown, COVID-19, lots of unemployment, but where is the real estate market? So I have two guests with me today. I have Kevin Miyana from Keller Williams. He is, no, a, that's okay. <laughs> he is a market expert. And I have John Kiefer, who is a mortgage officer, a loan officer with Kama Aina. Really? Uh, Kama, sorry, Kama Aina Mortgage Group. So you would think I would know. So Kevin, what yes. are we seeing with the real estate market right now? So, Kina, thank you so much, so much for inviting me on the show. I really appreciate uh, and uh, uh, the opportunity to kind of give a perspective of what's happening in Hawaii. And again, I've been in the real estate business for over 20 years and just finally stepped down from running the third largest real estate company, Keller Williams Honolulu. Uh, right now, it's very interesting. Uh, we really thought there was going to be a crash. And initially, there was a minimal crash of, uh, because of the shutdowns. Uh, surprisingly, again, I'll give you an example. Single family homes went from negative 26% to 7.5% to now is 3% minus from the year before. Single so, family homes. Yeah. Can you explain that? Yeah. Can you it, break that down? Yeah. So, and, and again, what, what's happening right now is days on the market. So we went from, uh, uh, when we talk about months of inventory and days on the market, so we're talking about going from 32 days on the market, we are now down to 13 days on the market where the house is available. The other crazy part is we're talking about a 3.9% increase in prices. And this is not just in, uh, locally, but it's also nationwide. So uh, when, you, when you talk about the real estate market and we talk about months of inventory, we talk about. Uh, usually it was six months of inventory. Now we're talking, and, and I changed the perspective because in Hawaii, it's, it hasn't been six months in 30 years, right? So it's been three months is, is been the norm. So what, if all the inventory, all the single family homes, we sold it all at one time it, and it took three months, it would be a stable market. And right now we're at 2.4 months of inventory. So we are now what they call a seller's market on on single family homes, but on condos right now, we are at 4.7 months of inventory. So we are buyer's market on condos. And on condos, we talked about 3.9% uh, increase in uh, pricing for single family homes. We're looking at actually a, a minus 15% on cost of, of a condo. So it's pretty amazing what's going on right now in the, in the market. It, we're getting multiple offers on single family homes that are ready to sell, right? Are ready to sell. Um, I'll give you a huge example. Pacific Palisades in, in Pearl City. We couldn't eat, we had to beg people to come to see that property way up on the hill. We got in one listing in our office, we had 21 offers and we went from $725,000 list price. We ended up at $800,000 sell price in Pacific Palisades, we had to beg people to come. Uh, I just had a probate in, in uh, Eva Beach and we had multiple offers on a probate property that we're gonna sell in September. So people gotta wait for this property, but we got actually full price offer and it still has to go to the court. But again, we're getting multiple offers. We had, um, right now, uh, we have a $1.2 million listing in uh, Mount Lowe Valley that we already got one a full price offer and we're getting multiple offers at 1.2 million. So think about that. Mauna Loa Valley was at 800,000 before. Now it's at 1.2 million. Yeah. So, um, but the condo market again is pretty saturated. There's a lot of inventory. It's still building. Um, if uh, the, the sellers were too late right now, they probably, it's a buyer's market. Um, and you can see the pricing going uh, just a little bit down as it goes in the market. So, so why, why do you think that's happening? We don't have a crystal ball. This is all just conjecture. But yeah. why, why do you think um, we're seeing a decline in, in the condo market? Because I've seen that also. But, well, here's the first thing right now. Because the single family market is so hot. Uh, and then again, John can testify to this again. What kind of interest rates? It's phenomenal interest rates. Phenomenal. And especially on the west side, even Kailua, Kaneohe side, you look at the... Um, 
amount of VA buyers there are because VA buyers right now at a, are at a 2.75, always almost down to 2.25 interest rate. And the lenders are actually giving them money to close. It, right. it, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So, so when you look at how money, uh, you, and right now, because they opened up the market to the VA where uh, the vector or the uh, military people can actually fly in now, even though they're under quarantine, um, they're having the opportunity to now to go ahead and purchase because living on base or purchasing right now at a 2.5 or 2.25 interest rate and they're giving you some of the closing costs, what would you do? I mean, it, it's, it's a huge savings right now. Oh, right. Yeah. So I see a lot of it as far as I, I specialize on more on the West side versus overall, but I'm just seeing multiple offers on multiple locations. And um, it's not, it's not foreign buyers. It, it is uh Hawaii buyers and again, people that are, are transferring in. So is that what you're seeing, John? So what, what are we seeing with the interest rates and then how is, is the market impacting those right now? Yeah, that's great. That's a great question. And, and Kevin pretty much nailed it when he said that the, for, especially for VA, for VA loans, the rates are really, really low. And, you know, we're going at 2.25 and sometimes even giving credits for closing costs for some of those lower rates with VA. So it's, it's, we're at, it's phenomenal. I haven't seen it like this ever. And even on conventional loans, we're still um, about uh, three eights, I think three eights lower than we were a year ago, even on conventional loans. And um, the, 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 the Fed is helping out because they're purchasing mortgage-backed securities every day, $4 billion a day. And um, I mean, to the, to the, to the lay person, that, well, what does that mean, right? Basically what they're doing is they're stabilizing the rate they're stabilizing the market so that we don't have a huge jump in rates or rates bottom, bottoming out. So they're controlling the curve, the yield, the yield curve on the 10 day, on 10, 10 day treasuries. They're controlling it. Something that's fairly new. We learned this from the Japanese and now we're doing it. The Fed's doing it. So pretty much it's, it's, it can last as long as the Fed wants it to last these rates. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of things that could drive it though, up or down. And I, I think that the rates are going to continue or at least stay this low for, for at least to the rest of the year and into the spring. Uh, there's a couple of game changers. If there's some, if somehow we find a, a vaccine and the economy starts pumping up again, that's going to, that's going to change the stock market, change the rates a little bit. We could see a jump in rates there, but I, I don't see them getting uh, higher in the next few months. So it's a great time to buy and it's a great time to sell. As, as you guys both know, even, even, even condos, even though the single family homes are getting multiple offers, I've had in the last week, I've had at least three VA buyers for both single family homes and for purchasing condos on the West side and why not um, over asking 25,000, 30,000 is still being outbid. Wow. So now's the time to sell and buy yeah. and refinance. Yeah. I, you know, Kino, one of the things you got to look at is the, um, I think it's the testing. So they're pretty close to getting the testing down where we can get a 15 minute test. That's probably going to be November, December, and then perfection and, and distribution. Probably I'm looking at January, February from based upon CNN and some other news things. So if we get the testing down and if the, um, if we get the tracing correct, that's, I believe that's going to be one of the reasons why we open up the market just a little bit. So as people look at these things and sell, I've been telling the sellers, you got to watch out because once it starts opening up, then watch the feds. What are they going to do? Are they going to subsidize? Are they going to now go, go back to regular? So I'm uh, right now, as far as listing uh, properties, um, uh, John's again, she's spot on. It's listing your property right now, especially single family homes. Yeah. So, so John, let's go back to the race. We talked about this before, before, before we started the show. Uh, rates can't just jump from their, their twos and threes up to six to eight overnight. Is no. That correct? So. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't really happen. I, I've never seen it happen. I've never seen it do the opposite either. So, I when they when they do correct, like when you hear when you hear the news, like like today, I saw the news that said mortgages are back to their all time lows, mm -hmm. right? Even if it's not all time lows, it's still going to be really darn close to all time lows. So they're only going to move a little bit. Even even when it says the rates jumped up a tick, it really all that means. It doesn't mean that the rate actually went up. It just means that it's trading for, for less than it was the day before. So someone yeah. could still be, they could still be at 
even though even though the news says the rates went up a tick, they're still within that window to be at 2.25. So, so basically, long story short, they're not going to jump not even a half a point in a day. This is not going to happen. Yeah, not even a quarter of a point. It won't. It won't happen. And, and let me kind of weigh, let me kind of weigh in on that, little bit, Tina and, and John. I, I just had a situation with one of our condos by um, where it was a seven thousand dollar. We we counted at seven thousand dollars, and then the buyer said, "Wow, seven thousand dollars. That's not going to work." Well, you think about it right now on a condo at three point three five percent interest rate. What is seven thousand dollars equate to? It equates to twenty four dollars a month. So that buyer thinking it's a higher price did not accept it at $24 a month. Now, and John can testify, what's the average life of a 30 year mortgage? Well, it's seven to 10 years right. because you refi or you resell. Yep. So here's the thing. That whole thing came out to about $1,600 a, uh, versus $7,000. That $7,000 increase was only worth $1,600. Because it's only $24 a month. So these buyers, as well as these list sellers, they really got to get their brain uh, correct on the numbers. And again, that's one of the reasons why you got people like John. That I work with John. He's phenomenal as far as loans is concerned. But, but the yeah. agents don't know the numbers. You know, I just did one. Again, uh, just imagine $10,000 is only $40 a month more. Yeah. And, I... and a $10,000 increase is only... Uh, $3,500 for the whole life of the loan. So yeah, the buyer is going like $10,000, but it's actually not $10,000 if they're going to either sell or refi in seven years. Uh, John, am I kind of close? Yeah, yeah, that's that's really good. In fact, sometimes we have a even a bigger lo loan amount, like an $800,000, $700,000 loan oh. amount. It's, a, it's literally a couple of dollars a month more, like more. two coffees a month. Yes. And a bento. That's it. Yeah. 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 So you're right. They just have to really focus on sometimes, sometimes our clients will focus on the wrong thing. So yeah. we need to educate them and show them where the real value is. And that's where that that's where professionals like you guys come in. Yeah. You and know, we, Tina, one of the things also, <laughs> when you think about the median price, uh, single family home median price. So I don't go on median price. I go on average sales price of the month. Yeah. So the median price is like seven ninety, but the average sales price is uh, one point one zero million dollars. All right, and up from uh, eight hundred and uh, something thousand last year, nine hundred thirty-five thousand last year. That's a three point nine percent increase. So can you imagine? Though the average price in in Hawaii is one point zero one million dollars. Wow. It, you just shake your head. But condos again, it was was five seventy. And now it's back down to about four, uh, four seventy-five. So again, condos is dropping a little bit. Uh, the sellers got to be aware of where they are as far as what they bought it for, and that's the biggest key, right? A lot of listers don't know what they they're trying to. I want to list it for five eighty, but but what did you, what are you making? The goal is what you're making, not what you what what you sell it for, what the list price is. And then the other guys that are listing goes, like, yeah, but he's selling it only at four five seventy. Well, he has a different goal from you. So, but look at the uh, condos again. Um, you got to listen. The, the average, the monthly inventory is 4.7 months. It, it is going up from 3.75 the month before. So, um, yeah. So, watch on the condos versus single family home. So, let's talk about where, where do we think the market's going to go? Again, it's all conjecture. We're not fortune yeah. tellers. Yeah. Um, but with all the unemployment today, what do you guys think we're going to see a year from now? That's, that's a really good question. Um, unemployment, I'm glad you brought that up. Some, some, tomorrow's the jobs report. comes out every Thursday. Huge. So tomorrow. Uh, the, the, yeah, on Thursdays it comes out for the yes. previous month, right? For the previous week, I mean. And they're predicting a gain of 1 million jobs from last week. However, there was a report today, and they expected about 900,000 job gains over the last week, but it was only 428,000. So it's less than what they're expecting. And another thing is that, the, the, so there's unemployment and then there's PUA. PUA is unemployment for gig workers and, mm -hmm. and people who aren't W2 employees, business owners and things like that. It's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 the, it's the equivalent of, of unemployment. Those aren't counted 
when it comes to the unemployment rates that you see on the news because they don't, I don't think they know how to properly account for them. So when you, so tomorrow or later in the week when you see the unemployment numbers, if it's higher, if it's lower than a million, you can expect the stock market and the rates to react slightly. Yeah. So when you say react, are they gonna go up, maybe down? What, what is nor with normal pattern? They could. So stocks, stocks might, the stock market, market might get a little bit better. And when the stock market gets a little better, the bonds for mortgages usually get a little bit worse. And like I, like I said a few minutes ago, a little bit worse could really be nothing. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's just, you have to talk to your mortgage professional when the time comes because the headlines can be very misleading with unemployment rates, all time lows. In fact, one more thing about that. Um, every Wednesday, the, the, the major media outlets report the mortgage rates. But what they're not explaining is that those mortgage rates were for the previous few days, not that actual day. So last week, there was a there was a, a jump in the mortgage rates. However, on Wednesday, the news came out that there were all-time lows again. But actually, they were no longer all-time lows because they had gone up. So now I'm getting all these calls and people who I'm in in contract with and refinancing saying, hey, everything's lower. And I have to, now I have to. <laughs> explain how that all works and and it's all part of it's all part of what we do is educating our our clients right yes yeah so one of my one of my concerns would be that it's a trickle down effect uh so what i'm concerned about right now is again unemployment and again if you heard this morning uh united airlines is going to uh furlough another what is it uh 16 uh, jobs uh positions right now um, and then United Airlines is a huge carrier for us. Uh, yeah. You can see the cutbacks on Hawaiian Airlines. So all of our friends and family right now, it's a trickle down effect. So where, and again, this goes back now back to taxes. So in the state government wise, we're, we're collecting less taxes. So we've got to stabilize. And right now it's not going to stabilize. I believe it's not going to stabilize for a while, especially now they just took the, uh, the other subsidy from $600 a, a week. Now to, Now it's only... They, no, they didn't even put it in play yet, right? They said 300, but it's not in play yet. So what I'm, what I'm very fearful of is what's going to happen is people are going to stop uh, making their payments because they can't afford it to. So where does that happen with the start, uh, with uh, the real estate market? Well, it's going to be a trickle down. So are there going to be um, uh, foreclosures or short sales? Um, that's what we really got to look out in December and uh, de- uh, January because it's gonna take a long time for us to recover, right? Right now, the reason why the United Airlines is cutting back is because the lack of people flying and that's to Hawaii, right? So we have that, that it's, we went from 30,000 uh, visitors a day, we're now down to 600 uh, a week, right? Excuse me, yeah, 600 a day or less. So it's just a trickle down thing and it's gonna affect our housing market again, just because of everything goes from from those uh, tourist uh, situations all the way now down to the government and it's going to be police and that's the concern of everybody right the the, the regular workers here so yeah so with the foreclosures that's a really good point because um contrary to popular belief lenders investors banks they don't want to re, re uh, yeah. uh foreclose on a home they don't want to repossess a home they don't want to that's not their business that's a that's a losing proposition for them for their bottom line they're in the business of servicing mortgages and collecting mortgage payments and dispersing them. They're not in the, in the business of selling homes and putting them, listing them and getting them prepped and ready and maintenance and everything while it's in escrow. That's not, that's not what they want to do. And the government knows that. And so the government, regardless of who wins in November, I think that they're going to continue yes. with the moratorium on evictions and foreclosures, which they have now to the end of the year, mm-hmm. because we will, be in a lot of trouble if people are foreclosed on who can't make their mortgage payments. A lot of people cannot make their mortgage payments. So there's forbearance programs in place. Yeah. They'll have to continue. And like you said, Kevin, someone has to pay for that yeah. down the road. And it's going to be our, our children, and our grandchildren, most likely, because mm-hmm. there's no way we can make it up in the next 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. So um, since you mentioned forbearance, let's touch on that for a minute. So I know for a while that once you claim forbearance, you could not get a, another mortgage for 12 months. Did they change that? 
or is that still in place? They changed it. They changed it. Um, <laughs> I know, right? They, they did the smart thing. It was a really smart thing to change that. Um, of course, certain loans that aren't government backed can do it however they want to do it. But government backed loans at minimum have to follow the rules of, and it it's kind of varies right now. It's either depending on the lender that, that is servicing the mortgage. Either you have to, if, it's, if it was a COVID related forbearance, then all you have to do is have three payments made and you, you can refinance. If it's not COVID related and, not, and like someone just did it just to do it, which a lot of people did, they have to be caught up and make three payments. Okay. So they've made it a little easier and uh, I, I can only see them making it even easier down the road. Otherwise, people are going to lose their homes. And they, we really need to capitalize on the refinance opportunities to get people into lower rates and saving money, especially right now in the times that we're in. Yeah, that's a good, really good point, John. Yeah. yeah. So, Kevin, you see more short sales, maybe more foreclosures. Um, what about we are seeing, I know I'm getting a lot of buyers coming from Boston, California, because now they can work remotely. So are you seeing that as a, as a driving force? We, we already said it wasn't foreign buyers. Like no. I, I have a lot of escrows going and not a single foreign buyer. Yeah. Uh, but I do, I'm getting some mainland buyers wanting to, to yeah. relocate. So well, you know, the funny part is I had just talked to uh, um, Ward Village and I asked them what was the uh, demographics of the purchasers. And they had about 70 closings or uh, new contracts going to market. It was actually local, uh, West Coast. Uh, Japanese was actually down, I, I believe it was about 40% as far as purchasing power. Uh, and uh, maybe about five or 6% was Korean. Uh, almost no, no existence on Chinese. Uh, but most of them were either local buyers or West Coast buyers uh, buying the, uh, the condos in uh, Kakaako side. Um, I don't see that in the single family homes. Uh, most of the ones that I see right now are very uh, much local people buying. Um, so, um, yeah, that's, that's the demographics right now. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing too. A lot of professionals, um, not even a lot of VA buyers. We have, we have one or two in escrow, but a lot of professionals are buying um, yeah. that, that are working here on island. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're ready to, because of the interest rates, Absolutely. Uh, ready to you know move from the condo to a single family home. And, and we're getting a lot of just local families buying bigger houses. Yeah, well, you know, one of the things I don't even see, John, I don't, John do you have that white coat uh, program? with uh, doctors? Yeah, we do. Physicians yeah. Level. This is kind of stuff that, that most agents don't even know and they don't even tell their, their friends who are doctors. There's a white coat program with over a million dollars they can uh, they can purchase at 5% at down, John? Was it five? five? Five or lower. It used to be 3%, but it might be five now because they've kind of raised it. But... Yeah, I mean, the doctors right now, I mean, th that should be a program where they should be buying houses right now, not condos. Yeah. But but again, uh, some of our agents are not informed of, of um, that th those advantages. Yeah, they have. It, there's some restrictions, of course. You have to be a newer doctor, so they're looking for they're looking f to help doctors who are who are 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 new new doctors. They have a lot of student loan debt, which they overlook because you can't buy a home when you have a ton of debt. Mm -hmm. And doctors fresh out of medical school have a ton of debt, right? but we all know their earnings are going to be what they're going to be in the future. Yeah. So well, especially right now with the COVID and everything going oh, on yeah. I mean, right now we have a, sh a shortage of nurses, right? So we all do. this kind of stuff coming in, but you're going to have more doctors come in too. So uh, I we just do. see that as an opportunity too. And, and what I'm seeing on the lending side are what you were alluding to earlier, Kina, about people relocating from the mainland or the tech industry, uh, San Francisco, Seattle, the Bay area, Northern California, a lot of them are now, a lot of their employers are saying, you can work from anywhere you want now. Yes. So they're like, well, then I want to work from the North Shore. <laughs> yes, they want and to work. So they, they buy homes here and they quarantine in their new home after they buy it. Right. Yeah. On the West Side, actually, you're talking about Colorado being the, the boom town right now because it's so, that, that's the place to be and it's cheaper, uh, you know, uh, versus uh, Silicon Valley, right? One, one yeah. point, uh, I think it was 1.7 million was the average sales price in Silicon Valley, and that's a shack. And then, so you can get something for uh, 400,000 in Colorado, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I know a story about a guy who 
he was he was living he was working for a tech company in the bay area and he was renting the top bunk of somebody's bunk like he was three other guys in the room eighteen hundred dollars a month he was paying now that they can work from anywhere he bought a home in like boise idaho and his yeah. mortgage is less than what he was paying for a bunk yeah. in san francisco yeah, so but that's not Hawaii. <laughs> that's, it's not Hawaii. That's not Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. So we only have a couple more minutes. So one last prediction, Kevin. Where do you think? Um, where Where do you think we're gonna go? I well, hope I think, we stay where we are. But where do yeah. you think we're gonna go from here? Well, I think I still think that Hawaii again because of the limited inventory. Uh, it, it's going to be pretty consistent. Uh, we, we're not going to vary too much. Again, we've only got a couple of big projects uh, uh, that's going to be coming up uh, in Mililani, right? So uh, a couple more in uh, VR Horton. Uh, so because of this limitation of uh, building, I think we're going to be, I think we're still going to be pretty stable. All right. What about you, John? One prediction. It's a prediction. So sure. <laughs> you can't hold Prediction. Yes. My, pr my prediction is rates will, will fluctuate a little bit, a little bit, a little bit and overall go down a little bit. Okay. So the incentive, the incentive to purchase or refinance isn't gonna go away. Like I wouldn't wait for them to get better because if they get better, it'll only be a little bit and it's gonna fluctuate anyway and no one's gonna be able to time it exactly right. So do it now. And just remember the interest rate goes down but the housing price is going up. So it's just this compensation, yeah. do it now. That's yeah. right, do it now. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been a great conversation. I think our viewers are, are going to love it. And um, this, again, has been The Life of the Land is in its Real Estate with Think Tech Hawaii. I will see you guys all in two weeks. And I have a property manager who's going to come on and talk about what we are seeing in the rental market right now um, with COVID and the unemployment and the, the, the rental moratorium. Um, he's going to come kind of give us a direction and see, you know, is right now a good time to invest in rental properties. So I will see you all in two weeks. Thank you so much, guys. It's been Thank great. You. Thanks, yeah. John. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you.